All right, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, citizens of YouTube. This is Pastor Dow. Did y'all catch the circus of the year yesterday? I mean, when I was going to town yesterday, I literally caught the circus of the year. I literally sat there and watched. I did. I, and I, well, let me say I heard because I pulled over into a parking lot just to hear this Senate hearing or this uh, Congress hearing. In other words, what I heard was, is I heard Trey Gowdy and Congress grill and drill the living hell out of this truck guy yesterday. Listen, listen, listen. Did you know, according to the law enforcement or the highest law enforcement agency that there is here in the United States of America, the FBI, did you know that we are considered the people in America? This is their view of us. We are considered irredeemable, deplorable, hillbillies. <laughs> I go on and on and on with this. And did you know that at the highest level of government, they're doing everything they can possible to control the outcome of elections by premeditating what that outcome is going to be by their wicked influence. In other words, their hand has been caught in the proverbial cookie jar. Now, what's amazing to me is that people from all walks of life be it religion, social, political, or economics, they expect for us, the people, to suspend all logic. And they want you to believe me no matter what. They want us to suspend any logic whenever they get grilled, but they want us, quote unquote, to believe whatever they say, no matter what. Don't judge me, don't do this. Don't. It was off the chain yesterday. If anything, it should let you know that what Sean Hannity did say yesterday, referring to and speaking about a deep state, this thing is all but real. And this Peter Strzok guy is a poster child, literally a poster child for the deep state that is quickly becoming a reality to the American people. See, we can all sense that there's something sincerely wrong. But how do you put a finger on it until you see something like this? Look, in this country called America, we have an, a massive, we have a massive abuse of power uh, that is taking place. Uh, there's gross negligence that, that is going on in this country. And whenever you have the politicization of law enforcement in this country, it is the end of America as we know it. Nobody is taking ownership for their actions and nobody goes to jail for nothing that is going on. There is clearly a standard for the well-connected in America and there's another standard for us hillbillies, like Peter Strzok like to uh, reference us all as. See, when you had the, when you had the FBI, I tell you what, I'll come back to this video for a second. The mail lady just drove up. Let me get this mail. I'll come right back. Uh, that's funny. The mail lady said, "Sorry, there ain't nothing to be sorry for." I'm glad to know at least at least one thing. That's an American that's literally doing her job, and I appreciate it. But let me get back to where. Well, what I leave off at? What I leave off at? Oh, oh, I left off at, at um, Peter Strzok likes to refer and reference all of us as hillbillies, us here in America. And, you know, let's just go ahead and admit it. The FBI is a literal embarrassment as a law enforcement agency. I mean, hell, the criminals are literally running a damn asylum except they got badges and guns and authority by the federal government. Now, when conspiracy, you know, people like to always tout that whenever we are, are, are looking at the facts and what's happening, they like to label us conspiracy theorists whenever they're running dirty. You ever realize that when they're running dirty? Um, when does conspiracy become fact? I mean, you can have all the facts right out on the table and stuff, and they don't care. They don't care one big or another. Look, 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 look. I remember Strzok saying something like this. This is what he said. He said, he said, he said this, look, he says, I regret the appearance of some of those texts. But the truth is, listen to what he says. He regrets the appearance of some of those texts, but I ain't taking a word back. I mean what I said and said what I meant. And he got this smug face look on his, it's, it's hell. It's crazy as I don't know what. But the Democrats are saying that we should that give this man, talking about Peter Strzok, a purple heart for being grilled up there on the mountain. I crack, man, you know, I'm finished. You know, I'm, I've been finished for a long time. I love 
to tell my black brothers and sisters all the time when I meet them, especially when we get into um, political, when we get into political uh, talks and, and sometimes they get heated. You know, anytime you're talking about religious perspectives, point of views, theologies, when you talk about political perspectives and point of views and theologies, people are going to passively, I mean passively, passionately disagree. They're going to do it. Most of the time when people are disagreeing, they're disagreeing because their feelings and their emotions and what they feel and, they, and, and their emotional level at that time does not line up with facts. And when people's feelings and emotions don't line up with the facts, they choose their emotions and they choose their feelings over truth and facts every single time. And, and it's hard today to say, you know what? On a religious perspective point of view, okay, do you believe that this Bible is the word of Yah? Yeah, okay, good. Now we can talk. And you know what? They don't even want to talk because as soon as you start pulling the facts out of the Bible, then they ostracize you. Then they slander you. They defame you. They, they, they resort to name calling. Same thing with politics. Politics is crazy. You know, I tell my black brothers and sisters, the ones with a hue all the time, especially those on social media or whatever it is, they, they love to have words with me. I often talk to them and I say this, look, 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 let's, let's get this right. In 1963, when President Kennedy introduced um, civil law legislation, all right, and affirmative action, okay? It wasn't until Lyndon Baines Johnson got in office in 65 when it was actually passed. But you know he did that with deep regret, but he had to do it because it was a political move. And you know, exactly what the Democrats said back then they said this we have lost the South forever you hear that because what did they do they gave blacks the right to vote it didn't happen until 1965 okay and affirmative action took place I believe in 1968 and man I tell you what look I often say to them my black brothers and sisters, uh, let's get some facts here. And you won't believe how incensed and how enraged they get when I make this statement right here. I say, okay, let's just, let's just tally this thing up. Let's put this thing out here on the deck, okay? Let's lay it at the table. We've had a lot of black politicians since affirmative actions, yes or no. And we have had civil rights laws and voting rights laws legislation introduced and passed. Yes or no? Uh-huh. Okay, so now my question to you is, how has your life and your position of equality improved here in America since there are black congressmen, congresswomen, black presidents, how has it improved? Has your life style improved one damn bit? And the answer is a positively no, but rather than admitting the fact that every single one of those politicians, when they get up in office, they enrich themselves. They enrich themselves through donations. And they, they, they are prospering while the rest of us are still out here suffering and working like slaves on a plantation. Has your life improved? No, I mean, think about this. Barack Hussein Obama had the chance to pardon Jack Johnson. Watch this. I'm going to lay some facts out here again. And see, I know, see, when I start bringing up stuff like this, I don't know why people get offended. Just tell the damn truth and admit it. And, and then when you start doing that, a defibrillator is on your mind. It becomes alive. And when it becomes alive, you start to exercise self-autonomy. You actually start to think. You actually start to use reasoning abilities. Can you believe it? But it took a white president, John, Donald J. Trump, to actually pardon Jack Johnson for atrocities. Emmett Till. They lied. The ones who beat the hell of them and killed him lied. The lady admitted in 1987 that she lied. A, a biography was written on it. And where's the justice in all this? I mean, where's the justice? I mean, I'm sorry, folks. I don't mean to offend you. But first of all, they all rats. But when you picking and choosing a party, political party, especially Democrats, and you can't, and you you have to literally ignore the facts in order to actually use that type of um, cognitive dissonance. That's what you have to use in order to try to say, you know what, I know that the Democratic Party 
uh, hasn't done a damn thing for black people at all or any people of, of any different nationality or color or hue or whatever you call it. And they ain't done a damn thing for white folks either. But you know what? And, and mind you, Lyndon Bain Johnson, as well as he said, he said, if you take the lowest of the whites and you make them feel like that they're better than the blacks right there, they will give you not only their pocketbook, but they even give you the money out of it. <laughs> Man, with devils like that, what can you do in the day, the time, and the hour that we're in? I tell you. But yesterday was a grilling, a literal grilling. Look, you accomplish nothing dealing with feelings and emotions. Pretty soon, you're going to have to deal with the forest. And you're going to see that the trees is in the forest. And the forest is the trees. Continue to keep ignoring this at your own apparel. You see, there's an attitude that's being developed today. I don't know what the hell is going on, but somebody needs to, to give it to us. I think the reason why that I have to worry about a lot of hyperbole. I learned that. <laughs> I learned that the other day. Hyperbole. <laughs> I was like, wow, what the hell is that? When looked it up, I go, dang. <laughs> you mean tell me we live in a world where we can actually say something, be it in text or in writing? But yet we don't, when we uh, are called on the carpet to explain our position and our words, well, I'm dealing in hyperbole. In other words, I didn't really mean what I said. I don't care how it appears, but that ain't what I meant. So, and what the, what the, what, the, what, what is going on in this world today? What is going on? I tell you what, I think I'm able to keep my sanity and many of you are starting to listen because a defibrillator has literally been put on your mind. But I think I'm able to keep my insanity simply because of this and this is, and one reason, one reason alone. Besides that pump down there running to pump water, and besides all the vehicles going through here in the back hole and, and uh, those are working up there, I believe that growing your own food, living way out in the country, and living a quiet and peaceable life, and then you determine and you decide who's going to be your neighbors. And it is just something that happens that is not affecting the rest of us when we have control of our own lives. You know, you can't be content with food and raiment. All you got to do is just not want or envy the oppressor or envy what the next person got. But man, I tell you what, yesterday was a sick moment in time in American politics. Not only that, the law enforcement agencies are running the country. Now, the real question is, is who is running them? You just heard the truth, and that's the truth straight away. I hope with all my heart that you start paying attention to this politics stuff. I remember when I was young, I was like, man, I ain't got no time for this stuff. I wished I would have engaged myself in politics and knowing the truth about what that Bible says when I was at 18, 19, 20 years old because, man, what would I be at today? Because I'm a man of truth. I love truth. And, man, when you catch lies and snakes and dogs, man, it pees you off. Now, if you're a liar, it don't trouble you. If you're a deceiver, it doesn't trouble you. If you're a backbiter, it doesn't trouble you at all. But when someone lies to you and someone deceives you, you only got one time and one time alone to do it. And that's the shame on me, but if I let your ass in here to do it again, that's shame on me. Again. But it's going to be shame on you. And that's the truth. Y'all have a wonderful weekend.